Hey, I hope you guys are having a great day. I've got a special guest in front of us. Uh, Danilo is a crazy good name that we are beginning to know a little bit more about, but a Brazilian guy uh, in the world of uh, soccer. Tell us a little bit about your youth story in soccer and where you're at today, if you wouldn't, would be so kind. Hey, Kurt, thank you for having me in. Uh, I grew up in Brazil and uh, in Brazil, as you know, soccer is the sport, you know, football. And I grew up playing the streets, you know, several pickup games. And I played some in high school and college level as well in Brazil. And uh, I love playing the futsal. That's the indoor soccer in Brazil. And it helps you to be more agile and fast and, uh, you know, improve your skills of dribbling and uh, positioning. And, uh, yeah, I love that. I've been in the United States for 13 years. And uh, I still remember how to speak Portuguese. Really? And yeah, and, uh, and, and it's a joy. It's a joy uh, uh, to, to be uh, living in the United States, you know, uh, and uh, I keep loving soccer. And if you see the background here of the camera, you know there's some soccer players there for the club that I work with. And, uh, and that club is? So the club that I work with is the Tampa Bay Rowdies. The Tampa Bay Rowdies was very, very famous uh, in the United States on the 70s. And uh, when the Cosmos playing, we have a Pele uh, playing, uh, uh, Beckenbauer. And, uh, you know, it's like, a, it's an icon for soccer in the United States, the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Uh, the Tampa Bay Rowdies kind of disappeared when soccer kind of disappeared in the United States for a couple of years, it was a little gap. And then MLS start over. And as MLS started growing, uh, we decided to bring the Rowdies back on uh, the same league that was before. There was the ANSL, the North American Soccer League. But unfortunately, the league didn't survive for too long. And then we joined the USL, that is the United Soccer League. That is right now, there's over 30 teams playing on this league. And it uh, has the East and West uh, Conference. We are the East Conference. And uh, we play about 32, 33 matches a year. It's a very competitive league. And, uh, and it's a, a joy and it's a blessing and an honor to be part of this organization from the beginning when they start over. That was in 2010. So let's get into the personal side a little bit. You're married, right? I am married to a beautiful wife. She's American. She's a born and raised in Tampa, Florida. And I have a son. He's six years old. He's, the, he's a joy. And I love soccer. It's a lot of energy to keep me in shape and keep me busy. And so a, no, lot of, a lot of gray hairs, too. Yeah, not very many there, I see, but no girls yet. Not compared to you. No girls yet. No girls yet. Ah. Unfortunately, we no longer can have a child on our own unless we adopt. Well, I think that's a good idea. I can go out and pick you out a good one. You can train her well to be a good, good footballer, I think. Yes, definitely. But to... On the other side, I coach girls for a couple of years and wow. I love girls. I'm very involved with the women's soccer here locally. And uh, I think I kind of have more daughter than I need. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. This is crazy. We, uh, we, we were challenged a while ago to do something and take some American athletes to the Netherlands and start what, what's going to be ending up what we're doing in one other sport. But uh, your involvement, I kind of picked on uh, Danilo. I was recommended to give him a call and see if he, he would be able to be a part of what we do. And he said, yeah, I think it's a great idea. So now we're working through the very beginning stages. I think we are trying to get 12 athletes over this first year to head over there. I think I've got five already. Uh, we have not pushed this to anyone yet. So, Danella, just for your information, this has not even been on the street yet. No one knows. But yet we've got almost a hand. Well, we got a handful of kids that are wanting to go. So we're going to do the same thing, follow up this interview a little bit with uh, interviews from the, the European side, uh, the Dutch side. We're going to have some pro athletes and pro uh, coaches over there that you're going to be able to intermingle with and kind of put that together. But uh, what do you think about this experience taking athletes to – Europe and uh, we end up in Paris, by the way, and we may be able to get into PSG, which is going to be some kind of fun as well. Your thoughts? I think it's a very exciting, and uh, I know you guys been doing the uh, softball fast pitch for for a long time. That is like a, uh, I know you guys are very professional, and I think it's a very exciting moment to be the pioneer on bringing the soccer to to the program, and uh, as a 
you mentioned to me, you want to try with boys first and then everything goes well. You want to introduce the girls as well. And uh, what excitement to be the first group to go and that you be starting that, you know, that's like, hey, I was part of the first group and I was there, I was a pioneer and it was awesome. We had a chance to, to break ground with a lot of uh, uh, teams there, you know, a lot of clubs and we had a chance to go to Paris and be the PSG. Maybe I can talk Neymar to, to play with us. I don't know. Just, oh, would that be some know. fun or what? That would be some fun, wouldn't it? We never know, but we can, we can try. You know, he's a very approachable and uh, we can try something like that. Yeah, we might be able to do that. I got some connections. And of course, you've got to have connections over there. Even if, yeah. he, even if he came out and said, let's go have a coffee for, a, for three or four hours, that would be fun, wouldn't it? Yes, that would be awesome. But not just, the, I think people sometimes, they try to focus so much on the sports side, but I think the experience that you can have just on the culture side be in the Netherlands and then go to Paris, you may have a chance to go to the museums and learn the history of the country because Europe is so rich in history. And I think just to be able to be part of that and also play the game that you love, I think is an amazing opportunity. I'm very excited to be a part of that. Yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. The only thing that would, would be better than that is to go to Brazil, right? That would be a, an awesome thing. That would be an awesome thing to go to Brazil. I have a lot of good connections in Brazil. Maybe in the future we can have a team going to the Netherlands and one to go to Brazil. Never know. You know how big is your parents' home? Is it, is it quite big? Uh, my parents? Yeah. Well, my, my mom is deceased. My uh, dad uh, right now is living in the United States. He ah, goes I get you. back to the United States. He's still uh, looking for, for a place and everything. And about... I still have family there, big families, you know. So what I was getting at is we could bring like 12 boys and we could all stay there. Oh, we can figure it out the place. No worries. That's not an issue. Okay, maybe maybe we have to talk about that a little bit. But we, hey, Danella. We, we have families that will host those boys for sure. Love it. Just love it. Hey, Danella, thanks so much. I don't want to keep you from the rest of your day, but I thought I'd get a little interview in with you and, and share with the, with the folks that we've got going on that we've got something really going to be going on. It's going to be super fun. Anyhow, guys, this is Danello. Uh, you're going to see him around a little bit. Uh, super, super good guy. Great smile there, by the way. I'm not sure what your parents did for your teeth, but wow, <laughs> good stuff. Anyhow, thank you. Thank you so much, Danello. A pleasure, Kurt. Thank you. Bye-bye.